One opponent, Lamar Jackson, really struggled against Kansas City, and in fact, partly because of that, in his career, including the playoffs, he's only one and four against KC, 40 games over 500 against everybody else. Those four losses are his most against any single opponent, but Lamar is not concerned about who's on the schedule for week one. Take a listen. I mean, I really don't care who we play. You know, it really didn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, our goal is to make it to the Super Bowl. We lost to them in the playoffs. Just us beating them in the regular season really don't do anything. You know, it just helps us, you know, just keep stacking up wins to hopefully make it to the playoffs, if anything, to try to get in that same position again and hopefully, you know, be successful. But um, it really don't matter who we play first game. Obviously, it's the Chiefs, but I really didn't care. Tim, what do you find interesting about his comments? Um deadly accurate well I think just think he's right I agree with his comments and I think that he's saying the right things it sounds and seems like he believes it he's right well you know what whatever happens in terms of the beginning of the season how you play against Kansas City doesn't matter I mean we had the full screen up for a reason uh, you know in terms of how they've performed or how he's performed against you know Patrick Mahomes led teams so I think it's the right approach um, especially when it could potentially not go your way early in the season. And that doesn't mean that it can't go your way later. Look, Hannah, I think you've kind of said it. Steve Spagnuolo has done a really good job against that Ravens offense in these matchups. So I think it really comes down to can you control the game against Kansas City the way that you kind of have a habit of doing against other teams, lesser teams in the National Football League, because that's ultimately how Lamar is going to be judged. It's how uh, this era of Baltimore Ravens teams is going to be judged is how they play against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, and it was so crazy in that title game, uh, Acho. We look at the way Todd Munkin called that game, 18% run plays. I mean, we've talked about it again and again. What is it going to take for this Ravens team to knock the Chiefs off their pedestal? Well, it's got to be Lamar Jackson playing better. It's not necessarily about Todd Munkin and how he called the how, called the plays. It's about Lamar and what he does in the biggest moment, right? That, I love what he said. It's not about the regular season. It's about the playoffs. And he had a great game against Houston. But the next week, you get sacked four times, throw an interception. One of them's a fumble, sack fumble. And so Lamar has to be better when he plays Kansas City. And yes, the offensive line and receivers, but Lamar has to play better because he's, he's what makes this team go. And he wasn't able to do it when he played Kansas City in the playoffs. So I think it's all about Lamar and, and his, him upping his game when it matters most. Well, that had a tremendous amount to do with play calling because they literally did the opposite of what they did all season. They decided to completely do the opposite of what they built and how uh, Lamar Jackson thrived and just decided to do the opposite. And no, it was not because of the Kansas City defense. Kansas City defense is great and did their job. But that's not why they decided to just flip the play calling upside down on their head. But anyway, here's the thing that I want to talk about is I love how the media tries to act like people are like these teams, these players, these athletes are afraid of any other athlete, any other pro. It's not the way it works. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens do not fear the Chiefs. This idea that they fear the Chiefs, whether they should or they shouldn't, doesn't even matter because they don't. It's not an athlete mentality. And it's always the people that have never played sports. They, they, they don't understand this. Fans fear people, fear other teams, other players. But other players do not. Okay. I guarantee you, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens believe that they were a better team than the Chiefs. That they just believe that they just did not execute properly. That if they just executed a little bit better and a, and a few things maybe bounced their way, that they win. I think that the, the Buffalo Bills feel that way as well. Heck, even the Houston Texans against the Baltimore Ravens. The 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Like... They whether it's right or wrong is irrelevant, but it's the belief of these players and these teams that they think they don't look at them and say the 49ers didn't leave that Super Bowl and say the Chiefs were just better than us. And that's why we lost. That's not at all what the Chiefs believe. They were not. That's not at all what the 49ers believe. They were not intimidated by the Chiefs. They think I can we can beat them. We are better than them. 
And that's what the Ravens taught as well. So this whole idea that, you know, I always love when the, when the, when the media tries to ask these questions, like, what do you think Lamar Jackson is going to say in that moment? Oh yeah, man, you know, you're going up against the Chiefs and I'm real nervous. That's, that's week one matchup. That's a tough matchup. I, I don't know, man. I, as soon as I saw the schedule release, like I was tossing and turning in bed and I just, I just couldn't sleep about it. I, it's just been haunting me. Every time I close my eyes, I just see Patrick Mahomes' face and Andy Reid giggling. I, I just don't know what to do. And Travis Kelsey's dancing with Taylor Swift. Like, oh man, it just bugs me. Like, what do you, like, what do you think is going to be said? So it's just like, it's always just like such stupid questions, stupid sound bites. The Ravens to their core, Lamar Jackson to his core, believes he is better or just as good as Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. That's just an athlete mentality. It's that simple. They can respect their opponent. They can say that team is really good and the margin of error is really thin. But they in no way say, we are inferior, they are superior. Gee golly, I hope if we just play our best, we could eke out a win. None of these teams think that. None of these coaches think that. None of these players think that. Not at this level. Sure, if you're the Carolina Panthers or if you're an up-and-coming team, right? Like, you're not maybe looking at the Kansas City Chiefs or the 49ers or whoever and say, hey, we're better than them. You think... Hey, they're probably better than us, but if we play our best ball, we can beat them. And it's still not a fear. It's still not an intimidation. It's a recognition. But it's still like, we can do this. LeBron James versus the Golden State Warriors knew the Warriors were better. But it was, a, it was, it was coming from a place of respect, not a place of fear or even concern. And still understanding, I can win. We can still win, which he proved he could do. So it's just, uh, it, it's just so fascinating to to hear them try to put that fear onto the players, and then they try to cre- create these these weird, distorted narratives that just, quite frankly, never land to me because I'm the type of person. Now, listen, right or wrong, obviously LeBron James is a better basketball player than me right i don't think that's uh such a hot take and yet i look at him and i'm gonna go okay i can i can i can hang with you one-on-one which obviously is very far from reality but it's i have that 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 mentality it's just like nope let's go let's go let's ball out let's do it now i'm not gonna talk on the mic and brag and say i'm gonna own lebron lebron can't touch me he's nothing to me because that would be delusional more delusional than what i'm what i'm even saying right now but if your mentality is always as an athlete, I can hang, I belong, let's go. And that's exactly what Lamar Jackson has, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. I mean, we could just go down the list. The Packers, and if we want to say individual players or the teams as a whole, the Packers did not go to Dallas and say, oh God, we're going up against Dallas and they're home and they win a lot of games at home and they're older than us and uh, Dak Prescott's been playing for a lot and Jordan Love has really only played this season. Like, oh God. They said, no, we're dogs. We got this. We're going to go to the, we're going to go to Dallas and punch him in the mouth. And that's what they did. And if you don't believe that the, that the, that the Packers thought that they could go in and now beat the Lions and beat the 49ers and beat, um, the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl? I don't know what to tell you because, of course, they did. All these teams believe it. So, yeah, it's just it's just always funny that people think that these teams rent extra space in their head or that, or that Lamar Jackson thinks that he's not good enough to compete against the Chiefs. Just nonsense to me. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think that the Ravens should be concerned about the Kansas City Chiefs? And do you think Lamar Jackson is telling the truth or straight capping that he is actually concerned about the Chiefs and that game one, he's got circled on his calendar? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.